Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the Kinetics College, which is a joint project um, created by Kinetics USA, um, including Aspire RN, which is my company, an Amplex Review company, and uh, Harkin International. We also have Swoosh and um, Niners IELTS prep courses um, together in this um, um, joint partnership. So to kick off the Kinetics College um, program, I'm going to do my class today under Aspire R. And my name is Dr. Paul Beluan. I'm situated here in Texas, USA, and I'm streaming live here at 7 a.m. here. And I'm going to be discussing infection control for the NCLEX RN prep exam. So we're going to be talking about um, NCLEX quick tips, um, infection control, um, I'm going to give you some um, tips, mnemonics, and question and answers towards the end. So I'm going to be um, looking at your comments in the comments section. So if you're watching us now in our Facebook pages, can you comment at the bottom and um, let us know where you are from and what uh, time is it right now so we can, we can um, say hi to everybody. All right. Again, this is Kinetics College a joint program created by Kinetics USA, a nursing recruitment agency for the United States, um, together with Aspire RN, my company, the NCLEX um, review program, um, Niners, Swoosh, both of them are IELTS prep course company, and Harkin International. And uh, this is made possible by the um, partnership of those five companies, and this will happen every Monday at, uh, uh, I think it's 7 a.m. Central Standard Time here in Texas. It's 5 a.m. Pacific Time. And uh, I'm not mistaken, it's 8, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And we have people watching live from Georgia and uh, Philippines, Hazel Santas, Jewel, 8 p.m. Cebu City, Philippines. And I leave from Japan, 9 p.m. here. More um, comments are popping in. Um, to for me to read your comments, you should be able to click the Kinetics Facebook page, Kinetics um, USA Nursing Facebook page. We're streaming it live there now. And uh, put in your comments your questions or um, your location so we can um, mention you, all right? And uh, we're monitoring the comments right now. And, uh, of course, um, um, I want to I wanna just share that um, Kinetics Nursing USA um, um, created a scholarship program for nurses, for qualified nurses for their NCLEX review program and I think IELTS review program as well. So the NCLEX review program by the Kinetics USA is handled by Aspire RN, which is my company. And uh, if you guys are interested for a scholarship program and a recruitment um, process of, uh, for, for United States of America, please um, visit the link shown in your screen right now. It's kineticsusa.com slash application. That's kineticsusa.com slash application. And ev a lot of people are watching from the Philippines. We have someone from Zambia, that's Tassila. And of course, we have someone from uh, Iran, Somebody posted a flag. I'm not really good with flags. Please write your location. There's one from Iran. There's one from um, Saudi Arabia. And more um, comments are coming in. We have people watching from Ghana. We have people watching from all over the world. Again, this is Kinetics College. And today, Aspire RN will be hosting the show for an NCLEX quick tip class and I'm going to be doing infection control. My name is Dr. Paul Beluin and I'm a nurse and a nurse practitioner situated here in Texas, uh, particularly used in Texas, USA, and it's about 7 a.m. here in the United States. We have people from Australia and Jamaica. Thank you guys for tuning in. So what do you guys expect in this class for today? I'm going to be discussing infection control, one important concept for the NCLEX RN. Um, this class is going to be ranging from 45 minutes to one hour, depending on your participation level. Um, I'm going to be going through different infection control uh, principles and mnemonics that can help you for your NCLEX. 
And towards the end, I have five questions that I prepared. When we go to the question and answer portion, I would like for you guys to tune into the comments section. You're going to write your answer in the comments section and then we'll find out what's the answer after I see your answers, guys. I'm going to be explaining it to you, all right? So without further ado, let's talk about infection control. To give you an overview, the NCLEX RN is the licensure examination to be a registered nurse here in the United States of America, in Canada, and in Australia for foreign nurses. So for you to be able to practice as a nurse, you have to take your licensure examination, right? And this is how you get your license through NCLEX RN. It's very difficult. Um, American nurses is about 88% passing rate, but foreign nurses have difficulty in the NCLEX RN as shown by the statistics. statistics. And um, foreign nurses only have 43 to 46% pass rate, which is not really good because less than half would pass the exam the first time. Even worse with your retakers or people who already failed in the past, there's 25% pass rate that's even worse. So that's why Aspire RN is in the business of prepping nurses for their NCLEX, particularly geared to the foreign graduate nurses community. But our program actually works for everyone, even for nurses that are in the United States of America. And uh, we, have, we offer very... Um, different program because we also aside from our live classes that we do we also do personal mentorships and final coachings we also do exam readiness assessments and so much more if you are interested please visit my website at spirern.com and then again if you guys are interested for a scholarship program to fund your um, review process with aspirern.com you can also apply in kinetics website that's kineticsusa.com slash application and our recruiters will contact you to talk to you about the next steps for the scholarship program and uh, of course infection control is about um, 12 percent of your NCLEX content there's different contents before, uh, last about one or two weeks ago i've talked about delegation which is going to be under management of care and prior to that, last, the month prior to that, I've discussed um, prioritization quick tips, which is also falling under management of care. My classes with NCLEX quick tips is going to happen every first and third Monday of the month. And second and fourth Monday are going to be handled by Niners and Swoosh for IELTS. So tune in to Kinetic's Facebook page. And I'm also streaming this in my Facebook page, Aspire are in all right the safety infection control is about 12 percent of your NCLEX content and let's talk about standard precautions first so i uh, put up bulleted information there and we're going to go through it one by one of course when NCLEX asks you for the most effective um standard precaution or infection control or infection prevention your answer is hand washing and when we're talking about hand washing don't forget the most important principle which is friction so when we're doing hand washing remember the most important principle is friction it might come out in your exam and that is your answer right now there's two things you need to remember when practicing here there is what we call hand washing with the use of soap and water and hand hygiene you would probably hear hand hygiene more right when we say hand hygiene we can use sanitizers that's alcohol based of about 60 to 95 percent they they prefer cdc recommends the use of hand hygiene more than hand washing because hand hygiene using alcohol-based sanitizers are easy to use practical and it only takes a few seconds to really do that versus going into the sink or finding a sink um, and doing soap and water. But again, nothing replaces the ability to do hand washing because it has friction and can wash away your microorganism. But hand hygiene is a very good um, replacement for hand washing so that way you don't have to go back to the sink all the time to wash your hand soap and water. Now, if we're doing hand hygiene, when do we do hand washing? If I keep using sanitizers, when do I really go back to the sink to wash? When your hands are visibly soiled, say, for example, I've touched bodily fluids or um, there's dirt in my hand, then that's the time I do hand washing because definitely your sanitizers will not clean that up. And, of course, the use of standard precaution 
we do that for every contact with bodily fluids, right? Whatever body fluids that is, vomitus from the suction, nasal or oral secretions, ear irrigation fluids, um, vaginal secretions, um, um, and whatever secretions, blood. So we have to have gloves, all right? Or uh, um, personal protective equipment, except sweat. We don't need standard precaution except sweat, all right? So use of standard precaution is for all clients. Don't forget the standard precaution talks about hand washing. And later, we're going to talk about your personal protective equipment. And the question is, can we get the slides after the discussion? Um, one of the students asked that. Um, we don't really share the slides, but you guys can re-watch this video later. We're going to be, um, what's this, uh, resharing this to our Facebook page um, Aspire RN Facebook page, Kinetics, um, USA Nursing Facebook page, and Harkin International. Um, we do not provide copies of our slides. It's copyright, but you can watch the video later, right? And uh, in my Aspire RN group, if you enroll in my program, you can get a copy of the slides. But this slide is special because it's only for uh, formatted for one hour class. It's not for a full length class, right? If you have more questions, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram, and I'm going to share that to you later. My Instagram is at Dr. Nurse Paul, at D-R-N-U-R-S-E-P-A-U-L. You might be able to see it at the bottom of your screens, um, but that is my um, Instagram. You can guys um, send direct messages there to me. Now, we have three um, things that we need to remember for transmission-based precaution for your NCLEX. We have airborne, we have droplet or respiratory precautions, we have contact, which is mostly skin contact, but it can also be oral fecal contact um, precautions. So we have airborne, droplet, and contact. And of course, wear your personal protective equipment, PPEs. That involves the use of mask, goggles, or face shield, gloves, and gown. All right. So again, mask, goggles or face shield, um, gloves and gown, all right? And uh, so those are the things that we need to remember. Then we're going to go through each of the precautions one by one. Let's talk about airborne. When we talk about airborne precautions, remember the mnemonic MTV. MTV stands for missiles, tuberculosis, and varicella or herpes zoster. Varicella is chicken pox. We consider it airborne slash contact. Herpes zoster is the reoccurrence of chicken pox later on in your life. It's called shingles, layman's term. Um, if the person, um, if, if the other people inside a room, for example, of a patient with shingles have never had chicken pox or never had vaccines for chicken pox, then herpes zoster can be transmitted as chicken pox. But remember that chicken pox is airborne. I don't believe... COVID will come out in the exam, ju exam just yet because the updates are going to happen next year, 2023. So I would suggest, recommend that you guys take the NCLEX exam before April 1st, 2023. They're going to update the exam, pro uh, the exam questions. They're also going to update the format. Some of the select all of the uh, that apply questions are going to be longer. There's going to be the new generation NCLEX questions. So there's going to be a lot of update for April 1, 2023. I'd like to talk about that in a separate class. But for now, let's focus on the topic at hand, which is infection control. Again, it's MTV, it's missiles, tuberculosis, and varicella or herpes zoster. Now, when we talk about airborne precautions, remember the mnemonic PAN plus M. PAN plus M. PAN are, are the room assignments for these patients. And M is your protective equipment, right? PAN stands for patient should be in a private room and the room should have an airflow of negative pressure. Airflow of negative pressure. Now, airborne patients can never be cohorted. When you say cohortion or cohorting, I'm sorry. When you say cohorting, it's joining two patients in one room, putting two patients in one room to share the room. So some hospitals do that, some don't. Um, we don't really like to put an airborne patient with another patient inside a room because you know already that airborne uh, particles like viruses or bacteria can remain suspended in the air, particularly it's viruses, right? Um, but TB is bacteria. 
So again, they should be in private room, never cohorted, never um, shared with another patient, right? The airflow is negative pressure. Negative pressure sucks the air out from the room or right, into the vent. That way, air particles will not accumulate inside the room. So it's negative pressure. The negative pressure room standard is there is an air exchange with fresh air, 6 to 12 exchanges per hour. There was a select all the applied question before about tuberculosis, about missiles, and what type of room. If it asks you how many exchanges, about 6 to 12. If it says 3 or 2 exchanges per hour, well, that's not a correct answer. 6 to 12 exchanges per hour. And it also has, for the filters inside the negative pressure room, we call it HEP a filters or um, high efficiency particulate air filters high efficiency particulate air filters and then during cleaning um, the cleaners will bleach it they can also use ultraviolet light to kill the viruses and bacteria suspended in the air and in contact with your objects inside the room all right the bed the, the doors um the side rails and everything that's inside the room right so airflow is negative pressure um to check if your room is negative pressure what we do in the hospital it's simple right close the door and put like a little napkin under the door if the nap napkin is sucked inside the room then that room is negative pressure which means there's air that's being sucked into the vent all right so put a napkin under the door and see if it goes inside. That's how you know the negative pressure is working. And of course, for the negative pressure to work, for negative pressure room to work, you got to keep the door closed all the time, all right? Now, so that's the room. It's pan, private room, not cohorted. Airflow is negative pressure room with HEP, uh, HEP A filters or high efficiency particulate air filters. For the mask, we use N95, which is NIOSH approved. So N95 or greater, which is 95% efficiency in uh, um, preventing, you know, air, um, aerosolized viruses to come into you when you're breathing. So N95 masks, surgical masks are not N95. There's different types of N95. When you start to work in a hospital, they're going to fit test you with a different N95 and it has to have a tight seal. All right. So some people do not qualify for N95. They, they have beards or certain facial features would not allow for the N95 to be effective. Then we can use the PAPRS or positive air pressure um, something mask. So you put it over your head, it blows air inside. That way air doesn't come in. So it's positive a, uh, air pressure. So that's PAPRS, right? So but particularly in your exam, we use N95. But if the patient is going out of the room, there was a question before in endless tuberculosis patients about to go to the x-ray. What will the nurse do? Put a surgical mask. Surgical or regular mask would do for the patient while they're being transported. Uh, people going inside the room will wear N95. Patient goes out of the room, wears a surgical mask, all right? If there are secretions involved, for example, suctioning, or you're cleaning a mechanical ventilator, or you're feeding a patient or something like that, then wear appropriate equipment, protective equipment, like gloves, if you're going to touch it, and gown, if you think it's going to splatter around. Particularly, we're talking about suctioning, right? For example, tuberculosis patient, intubated, or something like that, we need suction. It's going to aerosolize those droplets. Um, so we want to wear gloves and gown as well. You can also wear a face shield accordingly, all right? So again, Pan M, it's private room, not cohorted. Airflow is negative pressure and wear mask, all right? What type of mask? N95. What about the patient going out of the room? What type of mask? It's surgical mask or regular mask. And what are the airborne precautions? Again, can you guys type in the comments? What are the different conditions that have airborne precaution? I only gave you three and it's easy to remember. It's early here in Texas. While I wait for your answers, I'm going to drink my coffee. What are the airborne precautions? We have MTV. What are those? We have missiles, tuberculosis, and varicella. Or missiles, tuberculosis, and varicella. Now, very good. Thank you for your participation, guys. Now, let's talk about your droplet precautions. For droplet, most of them are respiratory conditions. I use the mnemonic Spider-Man. 
Spider-Man. All right. Thank you guys for your participation. We're now moving on to the droplet precaution Spider-Man. So Spider-Man are uh, S scarlet fever and we have sepsis and strep pharyngitis. All right. Streptococcal pharyngitis. All right. We also have for P parvovirus, different types of pneumonia, and pertussis. Well, we already have vaccines for pertussis, so there should be no reason to have pertussis. But again, some countries don't have very good vaccine efficiency rate so or um, coverage rate. So pertussis can still be existing or whooping, cu whooping cough. Influenza, which is usually seasonal during fall and winter, winter season, um, it's also part of the droplet precautions. It's not airborne influenza. It's droplet. There's vaccine. You can get it every year. Um, here in the States, we start during August or September, right before the fall, when it peak, peaks, all right? Um, diphtheria is another droplet precaution. We have epiglottitis, uh, which is usually caused by viruses or bacteria. We have rubella, German missiles. Um, we have mumps, letter M. We have mumps. We have meningitis or meningococcal, um, meningococcal infection, mycoplasmal pneumonia, particularly mycoplasmal pneumonia. But again, I said all pneumonias, put them in a droplet precaution. And uh, letter A, N is adenovirus. Adenovirus. Again, Spider-Man, scarlet fever, sepsis, strep, pharyngitis, P. parvovirus, pneumonia, pertussis, I. influenza, D. diphtheria, E. epiglottitis, R. rubella, M, mumps, meningitis, mycoplasma, pneumonia, and A, N, S, adenovirus. All right. So those are your droplet precautions. Let's move on to the next slide. All right. You can review this video later so you can start writing notes. At least later when it's recorded, you can pause the video. But we only have one hour to conduct this show. And uh, for droplet precautions, what you need to remember is P or C plus M, P, C. And plus M, PC plus M. So for the room, it's PC. It's either private room or cohort. Cohort is sharing um, the room with other patients, right? So private room or cohort, right? We can also um, cohort the patient with same conditions. For example, one patient has pneumonia. We can put another patient with pneumonia. Uh, an influenza patient can be put in another patient with an influenza, right? At least the rules of cohorting is at least similar conditions or similar microorganisms causing the infection. If not, at least same precaution. At least both of them are droplet precaution if there is a need to share the room. And of course, for the mask, letter M is mask. Patient, um, I'm sorry, visitors should still wear masks. Nurses should wear masks going inside the room. Earlier in airborne, we cannot cohort patients. Droplet can be cohorted. Earlier in airborne, the mask is N95. Here, we just need um, surgical mask, right? Surgical mask. And uh, of course, within three feet, mask is very important to be worn because the droplet can spread up to three feet. Some books are six feet. So just wear a mask going inside. Do the patient need a negative pressure room for droplet? No, because the droplets will eventually go down and uh, the suspended droplets are going to be pulled down by gravity. Um, and uh, after some time, because there are bacteria, they're heavier than viruses, which gets to be suspended to the air longer. And that's the difference between airborne and droplet. Droplets will eventually go down. So you just want to protect yourself from touching those surfaces. We clean it up after the patient leaves the room. So again, masks, surgical masks, especially within three feet, but patients should be in a room or cohorted. You wear masks before coming in. And if there are secretions involved, again, wear gloves and gown again, gloves and gown accordingly. So if you're you're gonna suction a patient with pneumonia, then might as well wear a face shield or goggles. So just think what you need for the certain situation. If there's a situation in NCLEX and says you're about to perform suctioning for a patient with pneumonia, what protective equipment are gonna use, then might as well wear everything, right? So of course you wear your gloves to touch the suction tip. Of course, you will have to wear your gown in case droplets get into your scrubs and you don't spread it to other patients. You wear your mask, the most important thing, because it's droplet. And then, of course, you want to wear your face shield so it doesn't get into your eyes, all right? Or you don't um, um, get those secretions inside your eyes, all right? So PC plus M, all right? That's for droplet precaution, all right? 
Now, let's move on to contact precautions. For contact precautions, I use the mnemonic Mrs. We, all right? Mrs. We are letter M, multi-drug resistant organisms, multiple drug resistant organisms. Example, MRSA. What is MRSA? Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. We also have VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococci. Or you can also see VRSA, vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, right? So multiple drug resistant organism. When you hear the word resistant, then they're contact precaution. We also have respiratory infection, only single respiratory infection, only one respiratory infection can be considered uh, contact precaution, that is RSV, which is respiratory syncytial virus. The other name, this is commonly affecting kids. Um, this is bronchiolitis, right? Bronchiolitis. So if you hear the word bronchiolitis or respiratory syncytial virus, this is um, droplet. I'm sorry, this is contact precaution and not droplet. This is the only respiratory infection that is contact. And this is based on evidence before it used to be droplet, believed to be droplet, but it's actually spreading more with direct contact with nurses touch the surface of the bed and didn't wash their hands or do their hand hygiene and transfer it to other patients, all right? So RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, is contact precaution. Skin infections, V-chips is the mnemonic. We're, go we're gonna go there next on the following slide. Wound infections. Enteric infections, oral fecal is what we're talking about, right? Um, and eye infection. Enteric infection, we're going to talk particularly about C. diff, Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile is um, a bacteria that causes diarrhea, mostly for patients who have undergone antibiotic therapy. So when you take an antibiotic ther therapy, it kills the normal flora in your gut, in your intestines, in your large intestines. This can cause the C. diff, which is not a normal flora. It's actually, I think it's a normal flora, but it's it shouldn't be the, the, the main normal flora in there. It should be your lactobacilli. When the C. diff becomes the prominent bacteria in your gut, it causes a lot of um, um, diarrhea and it can persist for days. And we say in the hospital, I'm an ER nurse, so we've probably seen all the types of bodily fluids there is um, in the world, right? or from human beings, but they say that um, if you've smelled a C. diff poop before, you will never forget it. And that is the truth, right? You will always remember that smell. So when you see another patient and you smell that, you'll be like, oh, this is Clostridium difficile. We need to ask the doctor for stool exam, right? So that's it. And C. diff, the problem with C. diff is it's a spore-forming bacteria. Every bacteria under the Clostridium family is spore-forming. So spores don't really die with alcohol because the spores protect those bacterial components or DNAs or RNAs. So we don't want to really just do hand hygiene and alcohol rubs or sanitizers. We want to wash our hands when talking about C. diff, right? Wash your hands when going out of the room, all right? So, and then of course, eye infection, conjunctivitis. I got a question in Facebook and let me acknowledge this. It says, all respiratory infection are contact precautions as well. Okay, so your main precaution, I'm only talking about main precaution. It's droplet, all right? So in NCLEX, it's going to talk about one precaution only. But then of course, we also talk about when you're inside the room, for example, if a patient with pneumonia, the side rails, right? the doorknobs, right? The doors, the curtains, uh, patient's equipment or items inside the room. When you touch those, you consider them infectious because you're inside the room of the patient with an infection. So the question was, are they contact precaution as well? Well, definitely because droplets are going down by gravity to those items, right? Every item inside the room of an infectious patient is considered infectious as well. So your priority precaution is droplet, but of course you need to wear your gloves when touching surfaces inside the room, right? We talk about mask when it's droplet precaution, but you also need to wear gloves when touching articles inside the room. Um, you're welcome, guys. We have more people coming in. Um, we have people from Dubai, from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, 
We have people from Nigeria. Thank you guys for um, joining. And uh, Cameroon. And we are all over the world. Um, oh, Ms. Antonio said she passed the Elklex. She's a hit class student of Aspire R. And congratulations, Ms. Um, she was one of the students that was able to mentor. And uh, if you guys need mentorship, just message me in my Instagram at Dr. Nurse Paul. Right? For contact precautions, we talked about skin infections and I gave you the mnemonic V chips. So the V chips are V varicella zoster. Remember, I told you earlier that varicella is mainly airborne, but secondary precaution is contact. Those um, lesions on the skin, they can transmit chicken pox that way, especially for patients without um, vaccine or has never had the infection in the past. We also have a student from Japan. Wow, I'm surprised, guys. We're, we're, we, we have students from the European continent. We have students from the African continent. We have students from the Asian continent and from the Americas. All right. I have not seen if we have people from Southern American continent. So if you guys are from Southern America, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, I'm not good with my geography, Colombia, Venezuela, um, just drop down, uh, drop it down in the comments, your location, so I can mention it as well. But we've covered a lot of continents today. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in with me. And again, for those newcomers, this Kinetics College program is a partnership between Kinetics USA Nursing Recruitment Company, Aspire R and NCLEX Review Program or Prep Course um, Company. We have Swoosh and Niners, which are IELTS Review Company, and Harkin International. We do this every Monday. Today is actually the very first episode of Kinetics College. This is recorded, will be uploaded to our social media, both Aspire R and, and Kinetics USA. And Harkin International will also share them to their large Facebook group and their fo for their followers. Um, we will do this every Monday. The time is 5 a.m. Pacific Standard or 8 a.m. Eastern Standard. I'm in Central Time Zone, so I do 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And next week is going to be another um, company that will be um, hosting or sponsoring the Kinetics College. All right? And watch out for announcements in Kinetics Facebook page about the topics that we'll be discussing. And you can also follow me in my social media for more announcements about my classes or classes that we do at Dr. Nurse Paul, especially if you are interested with your NCLEX review program. And then again, for newcomers, if you um, do not have the funds to um, fund your NCLEX process, particularly your NCLEX review class or prep course, you can also avail um, the Kinetics USA scholarship program. So to do scholarship program for NCLEX, they partnered with us. I have hundreds of students from Kinetics USA that are scholars under the Kinetics um, USA scholarship program. They sent it to the Aspire RN company and we're reviewing their students. We're preparing their students for the NCLEX. The, the link is on your screen to apply for the scholarship program, kineticsusa.com slash application. Please fill out the forms and the Kinetics recruiters will reach out to you. Alternatively, please contact me on Instagram at Dr. Nurse Paul at D-R-N-U-R-S-E-P-A-U-L, all right? Uh, uh, we're flashing it on the screen right now. Thanks to our moderator, Ms. Milanis from the Philippines. And uh, she's she's been online the whole time. Thank you, ma'am, for moderating the class. At Dr. Nurse Paul for, your Insta uh, for Instagram and TikTok. For your questions, you can slide a DM on me in Instagram. I'm more likely to read the Instagram um, 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 messages than Facebook just because there's tons of messages in my Facebook that I haven't been able to read for years. Uh, manage a large uh, group in, um, in uh, Facebook. I manage multiple groups and multiple pages, so it's unlikely for me to read it there, so message me on Instagram. Anyway, for contact precautions, so we talked about Mrs. Sui and V-chips. Um, did I mention all the V-chips again? So it's varicella zoster, cutaneous diphtheria. Cutaneous is on the skin. Herpes zoster, shingles, impetigo, which is a bacterial infection, pediculosis, your parasites, right? And scabies, parasites again. 
All of these are skin infections. They're all contact precaution, particularly for scabies. We have stuff that we need to do. We tell the, the patients when there's scabies, when one person has scabies in the family, so we consider everybody infected, kind of like that. And they have to push their lawn, they have to put their laundry in um, hot mode or we use heat to really kill those scabies. Alternatively, if they cannot wash it in a um, in a washer with heat mode, with high heat mode to kill those scabies, they can also put the articles, for example, the teddy bears, the stuffed toys of the kids with scabies. We can put on a black bag and seal it there for about four days to kind of like kill the parasite, all right? We don't want those parasites um, um, transferring via fomites or equipment or items, articles from the patients like teddy bears or pillows or bath towels or whatever is being shared around in the house, all right? So that's for scabies, scabies all right? And uh, now our contact precaution would have P slash C plus GG. So private or cohort for the room. Remember, the only precaution that we can never cohort is airborne precaution. Droplet and contact, we can do cohorting. And then, of course, gloves and gown when needed. We particularly use gloves because we're touching the articles. You can also use gown when needed. Remember, they're not droplet patients with the exception of varicella and herpes zoster, airborne. And that's the only time you wear your mask, all right? But for the rest, if there's like, if this is like MRSA or C. diff, you really don't have to wear your mask. You just need to wear your gloves and gown, all right? And quick question, Clostridium difficile. Are you going to do hand hygiene with your alcohol rub or are you going to do hand wash? Remember, if we talk about C. diff particularly, this is the type of patient where you want to hand wash before and after, we don't use hand sanitizers. Yes, I said earlier that we can use hand sanitizers with the exception of C. diff because as mentioned earlier, C. diff is a spore-forming bacteria that don't die with an alcohol rub. You want to be able to use friction and water and soap to actually wash away manually and not chemically those spores and not, and not stay in your hand because you can uh, transfer it for, from patients to patients and you need to be really careful with C. diff, all right? Highly contagious. It's, it's, um, it causes diarrhea, all right? And uh, let's recap again for airborne. It's PAN plus M. We're about to do questions. It's PAN is private. Air flow is negative pressure. Your PPE is mask. For droplet, is P slash C plus M, which is for the room. It's private and cohort. And the PPE is mask, all right? The only difference with airborne droplet is airborne can never be cohorted. And airborne patients, nurses, visitors, everybody coming into the room should wear N95 mask. It should be fitted and um, 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 nurses get fitted. Everybody who works in the hospital get fitted with the proper N95 mask. Um, droplet is P-C plus N, just the regular surgical mask. For the contact, we use P-C plus GG, gloves and gown as needed. P-C or P slash C is private and cohort or cohort is room sharing, as mentioned earlier. And of course, when we talk about C. diff, which is a very specific contact precaution, in the hospital, we call it special contact precaution. All right. So C. diff has its own sign. By the way, one of the infection prevention mechanism that we do in the hospitals is if they're infectious, we close their doors, right? Because they're infectious. We put a cardboard outside. It's signboards and it's a uh, standard Jayco. Um, um, it's this quality measures, you know, like it's a Jayco protocol. You have to put the signboard on, outside to announce to people who want to come in, whether visitors or healthcare providers, right? Or allied healthcare mem team members that this patient has precaution. It could be airborne, it could be droplet, it could be contact, or it could be special contact. Special contact means C. diff. C. diff means you have to hand wash after coming out of the room. You have to hand wash, all right? Hand sanitizers will not do it because of the spores. Are you guys ready for the question and answers? If you guys are ready, press yes or type yes on your comments section, all right? Whenever you guys are ready, um, type yes in the comment section. We're going to go through five questions. I'm going to provide to you the answers, but I want you to give me the answers first before I tell you the answer. All right. All right. I think you guys are ready. Okay. Very good. 
All right, let's now go to your first question. All right, I want you to answer this. Number one, a client's skin, sputum smear, culture, and chest x-ray are conclusive for tuberculosis. The nurse tells the client that respiratory isolation will require what? For this patient with tuberculosis, A, caps and gowns, B, both client and att attending nurse, wear mask all times, C, gloves when handling the client's tissue excretions and linen, excretions and linen, or D, nurses and visitors wearing masks and proper handling of sputum. What is the best answer here? When talking about tuberculosis, what is the best answer? I see different answers that you guys are posting in the comments, but let's see. I want to see more answers. Let's see how we're doing here. All right. I'm also watching on my other screen what's happening in Facebook. Um, let me see if I share that on my on my own account. Um, I think I did. Um, but yeah. All right. And uh, let's see. Okay. So we have different answers. I'm going to eliminate A because we need to talk about masks. I'm going to remove C because we need to talk about masks. This is airborne precaution. So your answer is between B and D, which is a better answer, which is a, a more appropriate answer, answers letter D. Because in letter B, you've only, you said both client and attending nurse wear the masks all times. You know what? This is actually incorrect, all right? Because it said client. Clients don't wear the mask inside a room. Their rooms are already negative pressure. They don't need to wear masks inside the room. The only time we ask patients to wear masks inside the rooms is when COVID hit. But where, when they're inside their room, they don't need to wear masks. When they go outside the room, they need to wear masks. Answer is letter D. Nurses and visitors should wear masks, N95, and proper handling of sputum. All right? Wear gloves, wear a gown, and dispose it off appropriately in the yellow bin containers, which means this is infectious, all right? But again, follow your hospital protocol. It's usually um, uh, yellow or red, something like that, all right? Um, for infectious, um, that's it. Answer is letter D. A lot of people got it correctly. Number two, which of the following is true about caring uh, for a patient with scabies? Select all that apply. Is it A, mode of transmission, close and personal contact? B, household members and contacts of the infected child needs to be treated at the same time? C, instruct that all clothing, bedding, pillowcases need to be changed daily, hot water, and dry hot dryer iron? Or D, washable toys should be sealed in plastic bags for four days? This is a select all that apply. Very common question type in your NCLEX. What is your answer, guys? Nobody wants to answer because it's select all that apply. Ready? I see answers now. Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm trying to check if my if um, we're still live in Facebook. And yes, we are. All right, answer. Very good, guys. I see different answers here. Very good. Thank you for your participation. All right, answer is all of the above. All right, you guys can read it again, but I think I've mentioned that earlier, give you hints earlier about scabies, but all of them are correct. All right, intellect, all of the applied can either be one, two, three, or all of them are correct. Right now, select all that apply, I think, has a max of six options. Next year, in April 1, 2023, select all that apply can have as much as 10 um, options. So, which makes it even harder. If you guys have time, please take your NCLEX before April 1, 2023, before the next generation NCLEX comes out. Because it's believed to become even more difficult for you to pass the NCLEX with that type of questions. I'd like to talk to, about that in the next um um, in the next videos, or I'm going to drop a TikTok video about that. So please follow me in my social media, Dr. Nurse Paul. We can also check Kinetic's page for updates. And then, uh, of course, number three, how can RNs most effectively control transmission of MRSA, M-R-S-A? Is it please climb total isolation, letter A, letter B, gloves and hand hygiene, C, masks and gowns, or do nasal culture on healthcare workers? Let's remove letter D. It doesn't talk about PPEs. 
But of course, we do nasal cultures for patients, for the MRSA. But we don't have to check everybody. What type of precaution is this, guys? This is contact precaution. Very good. So what's your answer? Total isolation means they're by themselves in the room. They cannot be cohorted or shared. Remember, total isolation, no cohorting is for airborne. We also use total isolation for neutropenic patients, patients that are at risk for infection. All right, but that's going to be for another topic. Answer is letter B. Very good. Gloves and hand hygiene. Very good, guys. Tally your scores. I want to see your scores after this. Question number four. When is a contact precaution necessary? Thank you, guys. Let's move to question number four. When is a contact precaution necessary? Letter A. Patient coming back from Southeast Asia with yellowish sclera and pruritus. Looks like hepatitis. B, AIDS patient with reddish brown lesions. C, patient admitted with suspected meningococcal infection. Or D, burn patient about to receive wet to dry dressing. Who needs contact precaution? All right. Who needs contact precaution? Letter A, hepatitis. Yes, oral fecal, but that's mostly enteric precaution. Um, but who, who needs contact precaution? You know, when I touch it, this can transmit to other patients, which is who? Answer is letter letter C is droplet, letter D burns. Burn patients are at risk for infection, so you put them in a positive pressure room. That's a different the discussion where not, they're not infected, infectious. They are at risk for infection. Answers letter between A and B. Answers letter B. AIDS patient with, with lesions. Those lesions can contain the HIV virus. So if you're not wearing gloves, goodness gracious, please do. Because if you touch it, God forbid you have abrasions on your skin, it can cause infection to you or other patients. So do not transmit HIV through this, right? So the HIV virus is there in the lesions. It's, it has secretion. So HIVs are in bodily fluids. So answer is letter B, wear gloves, right, in this case. And then, of course, dispose of your gloves before you go out of the room. Last question. Very good to those who got it correctly. Which of the following patient requires the nurse to use the gloves and gown when taking blood pressure? Gloves and gown. Which one do we think we need this? Um, patient with hepatitis B infection, patient diagnosed with AIDS, patient with varicellar, uh, no, I'm sorry, vancomycin resistant enterococci, or letter D, patient with meningococcal infection. Which one do we need to use? Gloves and gown. Gloves and gown. Hepatitis B is bloodborne. So we just need to do bloodborne, you know, standard precaution. Wear your gloves. Remove A. Letter B is removed. AIDS is AIDS is HIV. So you talk about HIV transmission. So that's bodily fluids exposure, like sharing used needles for drug addicted patients, like sexual contact, unprotected sex, sexual contact. We talk about CRD. I mean, letter B is wrong because AIDS itself is not transmissible unless there's bodily contact involvement, uh, bodily fluid contact involvement. Answer is letter C, very vancomycin resistant enterococci. All right, can I see your scores out of five? What are your scores? Can you put it in the comments? And please do me a favor. After this show, can you please share this um, this show into your Facebook page? page or groups or your Facebook wall so other nurses can see it as well. Just put free class from Aspire RN, free class from Kinetics College, um, free class from Kinetics USA. So just share it to your uh, page so we can reach more people because sometimes after the class, they don't get to see it no more. And some of them could not attend because of time difference. Thank you guys and good score if you are three and above. If you're three and below, well, you can review the video later and you might get five over five after the after reviewing it. All right. But um, that's it again for scholarship. You can um, you can do um, contact Kinetics USA. The link will be posted on the link uh, on the screen below Kinetics USA. Um, 
dot com slash application for scholarship fanaticsusa.com slash application but um you can also um review in our program we're offering nurses month we've extended it to june should be may but i'm extending it today for 20 percent discount on all our services it's flashed on the screen with the uh with the um coupon code yes you can on my website aspirern.com you can message me you can message my team in Facebook, Aspire RN, or you can also chat us in our website, AspireRN.com. Yes, you can is the coupon code for um, a 20% discount. Um, let's let's correct the link, ma'am. It's AspireRN.com. Thank you. And uh, those are our different programs and the difference between our programs. These are available in our website. If you chat with my team members in Facebook, they're also going to provide you this information to help you decide which program is best for you. So it also has different durations and different inclusions. Um, one of them would have UWorld 90 Days, your own account. We use that to check um, how you're doing and we're giving you mentorship for that. It's 20% off till June 30. And NCLEX hit final coaching is a 10-day crash course. If you're about to take the exam next month or this month, contact me. We're going to bring you into our NCLEX hit final coaching. The next batch will be from June 20 to July 1. If your exam is going to be after these dates, um, within the 30 days after these dates, you can join this class. Right now, it's sold at $175. Again, 20% off. It's $140. In the Philippine peso, I think it's 8,999 Philippine peso. Um, and it's somewhere around 7,000 something. I forgot, guys. I'm not good with man. It's earlier in the States. But if you want to join a crash course, it's right here flashed on the screen right now. Or contact me at my social media, Dr. Nurse Paul. You can also contact Kinetics face, um, social media at Kinetics USA-Nursing in Facebook. They also have their YouTube channel where this is going to be um uploaded as well please post your question in the comments we're gonna get to that later if we have time and i like to tell these to the students i'm flashing my last slide it says yes you can and is stuff particularly for foreign graduate nurses but with proper um education and preparation and the right team to guide you yes you can pass the nclex rn all right Please drop comments in the comment section or give me a shout out in your social media. And good luck to you all. And thank you for joining Kinetics College together with Aspire R. And next week will be hosted by another company, but it's going to be every Monday, same time today. It's 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be happening every Monday starting today today is episode one but we're going to be hosting this every monday all right and you have questions just message us thank you so much for listening to this video for watching with us today please share this to your facebook pages and groups and your walls all right y'all have a good day and god bless y'all